Year 13, Further Maths, Year 1, Complex Numbers and Geometry, Lesson 3, Loci in the Complex Plane. So we're going to start off by thinking about the words locus and its plural, loci, and what they actually mean. So a locus is the set of locations that a point can occupy when it is restricted to a given rule or set of rules. So, for instance, think back to ideas you would have covered um, in Key Stage 3 in GCSE. You may have come across the concept of the locus of points equidistant from a fixed point. So, let's imagine we have a point fixed in place and we want to identify the locus of points which are all two centimetres away from this point. Well, this point is two centimetres away, this point, this point, this point, and so on. And hopefully this will bring back a few memories. The locus of points equidistant from a fixed point are all the points on the circumference of a circle. So the locus refers to the circle here refers to the possible positions of all the points which are this distance from the fixed point. So you can think of a locus as a path, a path that fits a certain set of criteria or a space that fits a certain set of criteria. Now, what we're going to do in today's lesson is have a look at how we can apply this concept to the complex plane. So we're going to look at complex numbers under the restrictions of certain conditions and identify the loci that result following these conditions being put in place. So let's look at a typical example. We're going to find the set of points that satisfy the condition mod z equals 4. So z is a complex number which remember can include all the real numbers as well. So we're trying to find all possible values of z that satisfy mod z equals 4. So all complex numbers which have a modulus of 4. Well, where can we start? 4 on the real axis has a modulus of 4. So does negative 4 on the real axis. So does 4i. So 4 on the imaginary axis here. And again down here. Now, there will also be points here which have a distance of 4 from the origin. So can you see what the locus is going to be? It's going to be a circle with a centre at 0, 0 and a radius of 4. So the locus refers to all the points which lie on the circumference of this circle as every one of these points will have a modulus of now, what's interesting is that we can also see this using algebra. So I'm going to give z a Cartesian format, x plus yi, so it's in Cartesian form. Now, the modulus of z, we know, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But we know that this is equal to 4. So I have x squared plus y squared, or square rooted, equal to 4. Square both sides. x squared plus y squared equals 4 squared. And we have what is very recognisable as the Cartesian equation of a circle centred at the origin with a radius of 4. So it's possible to identify a locus by thinking about it geometrically and also by thinking about it algebraically as well. Now, before we embark on any further examples, we need to have a think about a particular concept. And we need to think about what the modulus of z minus z1 actually means, where z and z1 are complex numbers. Now, in order to think about this, I'm going to segue for a moment and think about vectors. We're then going to relate this back into the concept of complex numbers, but it is easier to think about this in terms of vectors first of all. And vectors and complex numbers follow many of the same rules. So I want you to think of a pair of Cartesian axes, x and y, or i and j. Please don't get the 
i vector, the unit vector 1, 0, confused with the pure imaginary number i. They are two different concepts. And I want you to think about a pair of vectors. I'm going to draw them in. So from the origin to a point here, that's going to represent one vector. Let's label O. And let's call this vector B, and we'll call this point here capital B at the end. And then we're going to draw in another vector, another position vector from the origin to another point up here, and we'll call this vector A, and we'll call this capital A. Now, I want you to think, first of all, about what A minus B actually means. A minus B. Or, if it helps, think about it as negative B plus A. Now, negative B is the vector from B to O, and A is the vector from O to A. So A minus B is the vector that takes us along this route here, from B to O and then to A, so it's this vector here, B A. So what does the modulus of A minus B actually mean? So rather than just thinking about A minus B, what does the modulus of A minus B actually equal? Well, A minus B is the same as the vector B A, so it's the magnitude or the modulus of the vector B A. So that's really interesting. The modulus of the difference between these two position vectors A and B is the length of the line joining A and B, or the length of the vector, or the magnitude of the vector joining A and B. So how can we now apply a similar level of thinking to complex numbers? So I'm going to define a complex number here, which is in the Argand diagram there, and I'll call it Z1. And I'm going to define another complex number, which I'll call Z. Honestly, I could call these anything I wanted to. The labelling doesn't really matter here. It's the concept underpinning this that matters. Now, we know we can treat complex numbers very, very similar lead to vectors. So I can draw in lines that represent the modulus or the magnitude of each of these complex numbers. So here we have them in place. Now, what does it mean then if we think about mod of z minus z1. Can we relate that back to the concepts we saw with vectors? And yes, indeed, we can. The modulus of z minus z1 is the distance between z and z1 in the complex plane. So mod z minus z1 is the distance between the points representing z and z1 in the complex plane or on an argand diagram. And this is going to be a crucial concept in solving some of the loci problems that we're going to look at in a minute. So it's absolutely crucial that you understand what the modulus of the difference between two complex numbers actually represents. It is the distance between those two numbers when they are drawn and represented on an Argand diagram. So how can we extend our thinking here? We are going to find the set of points that satisfy mod z minus 2 equals 3. Now, look at the left-hand side of this. Mod z minus 2 means the distance between any complex number z and the point 2. And this is crucial. Sometimes people don't understand that z represents any complex number. So it doesn't represent one specific complex number, it represents all the complex numbers that fit this particular rule. So what we're saying is we need to find all the complex numbers who have a distance, or which have a distance of 3, from the number 2. So where's a good place to start? A good place to start is by finding the point 2. And what we want to do is find all the points that have a distance of 3 from this point here. So let's identify some points. So the point 5 
has a distance of three units away from the point two, and the point negative one also has a distance of three units away. I could also put a point up here so that this vertical distance is three units, and that point would of course be the point two plus three i. And then there would be a matching point down here, two minus three i. Now, can you spot it? Can you see what the locus is going to be? Because there are infinitely many complex numbers, z, which have a distance of three units away from two. And for instance, I could put one over here. I don't know what it necessarily is, but I could put one there. And of course, when you join up these points, they create a circle. Excuse the poor drawing of a circle here. Um, with a center at 2, 0 and a radius of 3 units. So, could we also show this algebraically? So, remember what we did last time. We said z is equal to x plus i y or y i, and we're going to substitute that into. The information that we've been given. So x plus i y minus 2 modulus of equals 3. So if I want to work out the modulus of a complex number, I need to separate it into its real and imaginary parts. So x minus 2 goes together and then we have i y modulus of this equals 3. Now how do we work out the modulus of a complex number? Remember it's essentially a bit of Pythagoras theorem in action. So we take x minus 2 and square it, that's the real part. We take y and square it, that's the imaginary part, the square root of that is equal to 3. And of course, squaring both sides gives me x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. Now, where have you seen this before? This is the equation of a circle, Cartesian equation of a circle. And of course, can you see it's got a center of 2, 0 and a radius equal to 3. So we can show this result using algebra 2. So now it's your turn. Based on the two examples that we've done so far, can you find the locus of points satisfying mod z minus 3i equals 4? Remember, z can be any number on the complex plane that satisfies this rule. So z is not one specific number. z effectively represents a general point on the complex plane. Once you think you've identified it, can you prove it? using algebra to find the Cartesian equation. So do feel free to pause the video at this point, have a go at this yourself, and then check back in to see if you've got the correct answer. So first of all, hopefully you've realised that the locus is a circle which has its centre at 0, 3i and a radius which is equal to 4. Now if you want to demonstrate this Again, using algebra, you want to let z equal x plus yi. So the modulus of x plus uh, yi minus 3i equals 4. And again, split this up into real and imaginary parts like this, factorizing the i out of the two terms that contain it. And then the square root of x squared plus y minus 3 all squared equals 4. So, of course, this gives x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 4 squared. And then again from there, you can see that this is a circle which has a centre at 0, 3, if we're working in a normal Cartesian plane, with a radius which is equal to 4. Now, we've started to form a general understanding that if we have a locus, which is the modulus of z minus some complex number, which we'll call z1, equal to something, then this gives us a circle which has a centre at the complex number z1 and a radius equal to r. So what happens if we're presented something like this? z minus 2 plus i equals 3. Well, we have to rewrite it so we can see the complex number that is being subtracted here. So I would rewrite this as z take away and then in brackets 2 minus i which we know is exactly equivalent which then the modulus of equals 3. Now can you see this is now in that format mod z minus z1 where z is the z1 is the complex number that represents the center. So 
we can see that this is going to be a circle which has as its centre the complex number 2 minus i and radius equal to 3. Now if you want to give your centre as a pair of coordinates this would obviously be 2 negative i. Let's draw this on our argand diagram. So 2 minus i would be about here and then the radius of 3 now it's going to cross over coordinate axes because the radius is equal to 3, so it will look something like this. So there's the locus, it's every point on the circumference of that circle. Now can we show this in an algebraic manner as well? Yes we can. If we let z equal x plus iy, so modulus of x plus iy minus bracket 2 minus i, is 3. Now you need to separate out the real and imaginary parts carefully. Again, be careful with your signs. So just always double check everything. So again, the modulus would be the square root of x minus 2 all squared, the real part, plus y plus 1 all squared, and this is equal to 3. So squaring both sides of this again gives me x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 all squared equals 3 squared. So from there, you can again read off that the centre would be 2, negative 1 in a Cartesian form, but of course we're working in the complex plane, so the centre must be listed as 2 minus i as a complex number or as our complex coordinates 2, negative i. So here's one last example for you to test your understanding of this concept. You're going to find the locus of points z which satisfy this result here. Again, pause the video, have a go yourself and then check your answer. So again, we need to make sure we rewrite this as mod z take away a single complex number equals a value. So I'm going to rewrite this as mod z subtract and then in the bracket it's going to have to be minus 4 minus 3i. Close the bracket and then and the modulus equals 2. So now we've got it in the correct format to see that this is going to be a circle and it's going to have a centre which is the complex number minus 4 minus 3i and its radius is going to equal 2. So minus 4 minus 3i might be somewhere over here perhaps and our radius is 2, which means this is not going to intersect with the coordinate axes. Think about this logically. So the circle will look like that. Think about its radius. It's two units, so it's not going to be able to cross over the coordinate axes based on this center point. Now, can we show this algebraically? Yes, we can. Again, let z equal x plus iy. So this then gives me x plus iy minus minus 4 minus 3i modulus of equals 2. Now carefully separate out real and imaginary parts like that, checking the signs of everything are correct. So then x plus 4 squared, real part squared, imaginary part squared, and we know square rooted would equal 2, so we could just leave it like that, both sides squared. So from here, you can see the coordinates of the centre of this circle are negative 4, negative 3, which of course equates to a complex number of minus 4, minus 3i. And then from here, you can see that the radius is equal to 2. So to generalise, the locus of points z, which satisfy mod z minus z1 equals r, is a circle with a centre z1 and a radius equal to r. And of course, z1 is a complex number, which could amount to be a real number if the imaginary part is equal to zero, as we saw in the very first example. So now we're going to extend what we've just learned to look at loci that involve regions. So let's find the locus of point z, which satisfy mod z is less than three. 
So we're looking for all the complex numbers which have a modulus less than 3. So if we were looking at all the complex numbers which had a modulus equal to 3, then we'd be looking at all the points on the circumference of this circle, which has a centre of 0, 0 and a radius equal to 3. But we want the points which have a modulus less than 3. So that means we're looking at all the points in the interior of this circle, but we have to exclude the points on the circumference. So that means we should draw our circumference with a broken line. So our true locus is represented by this diagram here. So you should have a broken circumference, a dotted line, and then the interior of your circle shaded. So think about it, any complex number in this shaded region, if you work out its modulus, it's going to have a modulus which is less than 3 because the radius of this circle is equal to 3. So now have a go yourself, find the locus of point z which satisfy mod z minus 2 plus 3i is greater than 3. So we need to make sure we rewrite this. So this is the mod of z subtract 2 minus 3i is greater than 3. So we know we're looking at a circle which would be centred on the point 2 minus 3i and which would have a radius of 3. So that's our starting point. 2 minus 3i is a point over here. Now the radius is 3, so be careful here because this distance here is also 3. Look at the imaginary part, it's negative 3i. So when we draw our circle, we need to ensure that we draw it so it touches the real axis there. Now we want all the points which have a modulus that's greater than 3, so we are looking at everything outside the circle and we aren't including the circumference. So when we're not including a set of points, they need to be shown as a broken line or a dashed line. So last example for you to try, find the locus of point Z that satisfy this inequality here. So again, pause the video and come back to the answer. So again, rewriting this, so it's in the form Z minus, so that's got to be minus 5 plus 2i here, to be correct. And so we are looking at a circle, to begin with, which has a centre, minus 5 plus 2i, and a radius of 3. But we're looking for all the points within that circle and on the circumference of that circle as well this time. So here's my centre. And my radius is equal to 3, so that is going to intersect the x-axis like that, because this measurement is only 2, so of course we need to make sure we get a full radius of 3. Um, excuse my sketch diagram, make sure your centre looks a little bit more central than my centre. But we want all of the points inside and on the circumference of that circle. So we're now going to move on to look at different types of loci and we've investigated loci that involve the modulus. We're now going to look at loci that involve the argument of a complex number. So we're going to find the locus of point z which satisfy the argument of z equals pi by 6. So we want to find all the complex numbers which have an argument of pi by 6. Well it should become pretty obvious pretty quickly that all of these complex numbers will lie on a single straight line which is at an angle pi by 6 above the horizontal. So every number on this line will have an argument of pi by 6. They will have different moduluses but they will have the same argument. Now there is one crucial point here. 
we cannot include the origin. Remember, the argument of the origin is undefined. So to ensure that we are excluding the origin, we put a open circle on it. And I'm going to make this into a ray. So showing that it includes all subsequent points on this line. So this line effectively extends out to infinity. So the locus is every point on this green ray apart from z equals zero, the origin. So before we go any further, a little bit like last time, we're going to pause for a minute and we're going to think about what does it mean if we calculate the argument of z minus z1, where z and z1 are a pair of complex numbers. So we know from our work on vectors that when you're thinking about z take away z1, so you're thinking about the difference between a pair of complex numbers or a pair of vectors, then you're looking at this line here, which joins them up. So z1 joined to z. So what does it mean if you then think about the argument of this yellow line? Well, it means if we drew in a horizontal, which is parallel to the x-axis, or parallel to the real axis, then the argument of this yellow line would be this angle here. So this is the argument of z minus z1. And that's what it means when you calculate the argument of the difference of a pair of complex numbers. So it's really important that we understand this concept going ahead looking at our next range of examples. So we'll start off simple. We need to find the locus of points z that satisfy arg z minus 2 equals pi by 6. So we know we've got this in the correct format, arg z minus z1. So our complex number is actually 2, a real number, so it has an imaginary part of 0. But let's find that number on the diagram, so it would be about here. And then z, remember, represents any complex number which satisfies this condition. So what we have to do is now think about where could we place z so that the line joining 2 to z will give us an angle of pi by 6. For instance, I could not place z over here because if you look at that angle, it's clearly significantly larger than pi by 6. So really, I need to set the angle first of all. Now, pi by 6 is 30 degrees, so it looks like about here, which means that z can be any point on this ray here, because all points on this ray will have an angle of pi by 6 when you're measuring from the horizontal here. Now, the only point that's excluded is the point itself, 2. And imagine if you substituted z equals 2 into this result here, you'd have the argument of 0 on the left-hand side, which we know is undefined. So the locus is represented by this green ray here and all points on this green line apart from the point 2, which we've indicated with an open circle on 2. So let's look at another example. We're going to find the locus of points z that satisfy this result over here. So again, it's set up in the correct way, z minus z1, and the z1 is, of course, the point 2i. So what I'm going to do is draw in a horizontal line through this point, which runs parallel to the x-axis, and z has got to be somewhere so that the angle between this blue line and the line joining z1, z to 2i is 2 pi by 3. Now 2 pi by 3 is 120 degrees, which gives us a, an idea of where to pitch it. So 120 degrees would of course be around about here. So that's an angle of 2 pi by 3. So if we draw in again a ray like that, then every point on this line here, on this red line, will have an angle of 2 by pi by 3 when measured against the blue dotted horizontal. Now again, there is an exception to this, and the exception to this, we will highlight in purple, is the point 
2i because if you substitute it in for z, you'll get the argument of 0, which is undefined. So it's all points on this red line, apart from 2i. So find the locus of points that satisfy this condition here. So this needs a rewrite. So we want it to be in the form arg z minus. So that's going to be 1 minus 3i equals pi by 4. And we need to identify the complex number 1 minus 3i, which would be down here. And then I'm going to draw in a horizontal line through that complex number. So there's 1 minus 3i. And then we want to find an angle of pi by 4, which of course is 45 degrees. So we're referring to all the points on this red ray here. Excluding, of course, the point 1 minus 3i itself. So the locus of points z is every point on this red ray. So let's take a look at this next example. Now this is interesting because it involves a negative argument. So again, we want to rewrite this. So it's argument z minus and then we want 1 minus 2i here, to be precise, equals negative pi by 3. Now, where is the point 1 minus 2i? It's over here. Now, let's draw in our horizontal line parallel to the real axis. But this time, we want the angle to be negative pi by 3, which, of course, means we want to measure this in a clockwise direction from that blue horizontal line. Pi by 3 is about 60 degrees, so we're looking at all the points on this red arrow here. Now, of course, we're excluding, as always, the point itself. So that point, 1 minus 2i, is not included, so draw an open circle around it. But all the points on the red arrow form the locus required. So just to generalise, the locus of points z, which satisfy arg of z minus z1 equals theta, is the set of points on the ray, which is an angle theta, from the horizontal through z1. Now, remember to be careful, this excludes the point z1 itself, and also be careful if the argument is equal to a negative value, as we saw in the previous question. So, we're now going to have a look at loci that again involve regions. So let's find the set of points z which satisfy this inequality here. So first job, we're going to rewrite the central part as z minus minus 2i. So we can see that we need to identify the point negative 2i or negative 2, depending on how you've set up your imaginary axis. And we want to draw in a horizontal line through that line there. Now, we want to find all the points which have an argument that then lies between 0 and pi by 3. Now, if we were looking at the much simpler example of argument of z minus minus 2i equals pi by 3, then at this point we would simply draw in a ray angled at pi by 3, like that, remembering pi by 3 is 60 degrees. So we'd be looking at all the points on that green line. But we're saying the argument has to be between 0 and pi by 3. Now, the points which have a 0 argument would be sitting on this horizontal part here. So we're actually looking at all the points in this region here, and this can include points on the pink and the green rays. The only point that will be excluded from all of this is, of course, the point 2i itself. So we'll just highlight that with a red circle there. So it's all the points in the pink region, including the points on the pink horizontal and the green ray as well. So let's look at a slightly more complex example. I'm going to rewrite this inequality, this central part, I'm going to rewrite as z minus, minus 3, minus i, a lot of negatives here, 
So I now need to find this point here, negative 3 minus i, which let's say is there. And I want to draw in a horizontal line through there, so we know what we're measuring against. Now, if we were just looking at the upper half of this inequality, I would then simply draw in a diagonal line from that point there, which is at an angle of pi by 6 or 30 degrees. Now, we do have a second part to this inequality as well. So that means our angle needs to be between minus pi by 6 and pi by 6. So I simply, symmetrically, need to draw in another part like this. And then we're looking at the region in between these two rays. Of course, we are excluding the point itself, minus 3 minus i, and these inequalities do not include arguments of pi by 6 and negative pi by 6. So this means that these need to be expressed as broken lines. Now, slightly unfortunately, for some reason I'm not able to rub out these pink and red lines, so you're going to have to just look at the broken lines superimposed on top of those. So, we're now going to look at a series of increasingly complex examples, starting off by finding the locus of points which satisfy something like this result here, mod z minus a equals mod z minus b, where a and b are complex numbers. Now, one thing I've found that people haven't understood in the past is that the z here is the same z as here. So if we're looking for a particular complex number, we're looking for a complex number whose distance from a is exactly the same as its distance from the point b. So whichever numbers we find, their distance from a must be identical to their distance from b. Let's see if we can sketch this on an Argan diagram. So here's my Argan diagram. Here are my complex numbers a and b. Now this is completely generalised because I do not know the specific values of a and b. Now, imagine if we join up points a and b with a straight line like that. Now, we know that this point here, which is the midpoint of that line, is exactly the same distance from b as it is from a, so it satisfies the result here, mod z minus a equals mod z minus b. But are there any other points? Yes, there are. And you have come across this concept of loci way back in your, your maths education, in year nine probably, when you looked at loci for the first time. In fact, any point which is on the perpendicular bisector of the line joining A and B will satisfy this result up here. So the locus is the perpendicular bisector, or all points on the perpendicular bisector of the line joining A and B. So can we actually prove this result here? So I'm going to let z equal x plus y i, and I've defined A and B in terms of their Cartesian formats, so with a real and imaginary part. So remember that point A has coordinates p, q, and point B has coordinates m, n, if you were putting this on a Cartesian plane. So this tells me I've got x plus y i subtract p plus q i modulus of, and on the right hand side, again, x plus y i subtract m plus n i modulus of. So let's gather our real and complex parts, which makes it a little bit easier to then work out the modulus. So I'm going to ignore the square roots because both sides would have a square root and then we could square both so that they vanish. On the left hand side I've got x minus p squared plus y minus q squared and on the right hand side x minus m squared plus y minus n squared. Now expanding the left hand side 
x squared minus 2px plus p squared plus y squared minus 2qy plus q squared. And on the right hand side, x squared minus 2mx plus m squared plus y squared minus 2ny plus n squared. Now, straight away, there is a little bit of cancellation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the terms together. So I'm going to say I've got 2mx minus 2px plus 2ny minus 2qy. And on the right hand side, we've got m squared plus n squared minus p squared minus q squared. So on the left hand side, I'm going to simplify this. So this is 2 x m minus p plus 2 y n minus q. And on the right hand side, um, if I collect these two together, m squared minus p squared, that's m plus p, m minus p, difference of two squares. And the same with the n squared minus q squared, I can collect them together as well. So I'm now going to do a little bit more reshuffling. I'm going to collect this and this together on the left hand side, and I'm going to factorise out m minus p. So I would have m minus p and then 2x minus m plus p. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to collect this and this, and I'm going to factorize out n minus q. So I have n minus q, and then n minus n plus q minus 2y. And you might be asking yourself, what can we do with this? Well, let's have a look. So I'm going to do a little bit more rearrangement. So m minus p, 2x minus m plus p equals. And then on this side, I'm going to make it minus n minus q. And then I can have 2y take away n plus q over here. And then I'm going to rearrange this. So we have 2y minus n plus q over 2x minus m plus p equals, so I've divided both sides by the 2x minus m plus p, and that's going to equal on the other side m minus p over, and then all that's left is this bit here, so negative n minus q. Now on the left hand side, I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, so that gives me this and on the right hand side I have this. One last step y minus a half of n plus q is equal to this and then multiplied by x minus a half m plus p. Now what does all this mean? So let's think about our points. So a was the point with coordinates p, q and b is the complex number again the point with coordinates m, n. So what does this mean here? A half n plus q. Well if we join together these points here can you see that that is the average of the y-coordinates? And again, over here, can you see that that is the average of the x-coordinates? So what we've done here is we've found the midpoint of the line joining AB. Now, the midpoint would have coordinates a half m plus p comma a half n plus q. So this has now got the format y minus y1 
equals m, bracket, x minus x1. It's got the format of the equation of a straight line. But what, and this is the question, is the significance of this over here? Well, if we go back to this straight line here, if we work out its gradient, that would then be equal to n minus q over m minus p. But we are looking at the perpendicular bisector, which means if we're finding the equation of the perpendicular bisector, we want the perpendicular gradient of this. So the perpendicular gradient would be equal to, and I'll just make a little bit of space here, the perpendicular gradient would be equal to negative reciprocal, so m minus p over n minus q, which is over here. So that is the gradient of the perpendicular line. And x and y, x1 and y1, sorry, are the coordinates of the midpoint, so this is the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So to generalise, the modulus of z minus a equals the modulus of z minus b represents a set of points or the locus of points which form the perpendicular bisector of the line joining points a and b. And we're going to apply this to an example. So let's find the locus of points that satisfy the following. So a bit of rewriting first of all, so we can see clearly what we're looking at. Okay, so the two points A and B are 3 plus 2i and minus 5 plus i. So 3 plus 2i will look like that, and minus 5 plus i will look like that. So imagine joining these two points up with a straight line, so that would look like that then of course we need to find the perpendicular bisector of these two points, which will be over here. You can actually give the exact coordinates of the perpendicular bisector, or the exact point, because it's the average of these two points. So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, so it would be at negative 1 plus 3 over 2i, and then you can just draw in your locus. So it's all the points on this pink line here. So let's find the locus of points that satisfy this inequality here. So we have a similar setup, but we're going to need to rewrite it slightly. So as we've been doing, we need it to be in the format of z minus a complex number. So here we have those points. So the two points of interest to us are 2 plus i, which is over here, and then 4 plus 2i, which is over here. Now, I'm going to, just to help me, I'm going to join them up with a straight line, as that gives me a little bit of clarity as to where my midpoint is for my perpendicular bisector, so the midpoint would be over here. Now, this time we're looking for all the points z which are closer to 2 plus i than they are to 4 plus 2i. So that means that our perpendicular bisector, which is the set of points that are an equivalent distance, should be a broken line. We're looking for all the points where the distance between z and 2 plus i is greater than the distance between z and 4 plus 2i. So imagine if z were positioned here on the line, it would be equidistant between those two points, 2 plus i and 4 plus 2i. If z were in this region here, can you see it's closer to this point 2 plus i than it is to the point 4 plus 2i? But we want our point z all to be further away from 2 plus i than they are from 4 plus 2i, which means we want all the points on this side of the line because they are all closer to 4 plus 2i than they are to 2 plus i. 
So a more ambitious question would require us to now consider two sets of loci combined. So we have to find a set of points Z that satisfy both of these loci. So I'm going to start by looking at the first one and again rewriting it. So it's mod Z minus 2 plus I is less than or equal to 4. So we're looking at a circle and we want it to be centred on the point 2 plus i, and its radius is going to equal 4, but of course it's less than or equal to, so we're looking at the circumference of the circle and the interior of the circle as well. So let's identify this. So 2 plus i would be over here, and that's quite a large radius of 4, so it might look something like this. Again, apologies for the poor circle drawing freehand. If I were going to shade this loci, it would be everything inside the circle and the circumference of the circle. Now, part two is interesting because you'll notice that we don't have any subtraction on the right-hand side. So if you want to, you can write the modulus of z subtract to zero. So we know that we're looking at the perpendicular bisector of the line joining the points 2i and 0. But of course, again, it's an inequality, so we don't want just the points on the line, we want to include a region as well. So where is the point 2i? Well, it's going to be somewhere on the imaginary axis. Now what I don't know is if this is above the y-intercept of that circle or not. So I'm going to actually find out the y-intercept of this circle. Work it out over here. So I want to know what the y-intercept of mod z minus 2 plus i equals 4 is. So remember we can write z equals x plus yi and substitute that in. So that gives me x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 4. So if x is equal to 0, that then gives me y equals plus or minus 1. So actually, the y-intercept there is 1 or i. So the perpendicular bisector of the line joining 2i and 0. Well, 2i would be up here, there's 0. So the perpendicular bisector of that line is going to be a horizontal line through the y-intercept of the circle there. But remember, we want all the points where the distance between z and 2i is smaller than the distance between z and 0. Now, if we have complex numbers which are on this side of the perpendicular bisector where I put a blue circle, that's closer to zero than it is to 2i. All the points on the green dotted line are exactly the same distance between zero and 2i, but we want the values of z which are closer to 2i than to zero, so we want to shade above the line. So my green pen, I'm going to shade above the line. Now this loci can actually include points which are equidistant between the two, so really that should be a horizontal line. Now where do we find the points that satisfy both of these conditions? Well, they've got to be on the circumference of, or inside the circle, and within the green region, so that refers to all the points in this pink shaded segment here.